Consider this situation. Suppose you want to make your font bold or italic. But here's the problem. The font that you might be using doesn't have bold or italic. What to do then? Well, Photoshop has a feature that allows you to mimic the characteristics of bold and italic. And today we're going to be talking about just that. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop, let's go ahead and add some text to it. So select the text tool, you already know that. And I'm going to choose the font Babus Newey. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry about that. And let's choose bold. It does have bold. All right. Now let's type in, say, need for speed, or I'll do it in separate layers. But here's the problem. It's typing straight. I want it italic. There is bold but there is no italic or for example, you want to use the bold and you want to make it italic or you want to use the italic and you want to make it bold. What to do then? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and change the color. Double click on the T to select it all. And then we can choose the color by going to the toolbar at the top and we can choose white just like that to make it stand out. Okay. Now, doesn't matter whether the text is selected or not just make sure the text layer is selected okay and then make sure the text tool is selected at the top there is this button click on that the character and paragraph dialog box shows up in the corner there's a grid there's this grid ish thing and there you will find faux bold faux italic i used to say fox but my good friend georgine corrected me thank you georgine all right, so let's choose faux italic. And just to make things clear again, here's the pronunciation. Faux, faux. Now, as you can see, it's italic now, much better. Now let's make it a little bigger. Press Control or Command T. First of all, choose the Move tool, Control or Command T. Make it bigger, something like that. And then I would simply make a copy of this layer. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click, and drag and release it. Release the Alt key or the Option key. Now, let's just double click on the T to select all of it. And let's type 4. And I'm going to make the 4 a little smaller. Control or Command T and make it a little smaller just like so. And place it in line with that one. Just make sure both are in the same line. Design principle. Okay, let's bring in a ruler. Make sure both are in the same line. Yes, both are in the same line. Looks amazing. If you cannot see the ruler, press Control or Command R to hide it, R to show it. So that's the ruler out there. Next, I'm going to copy the need, but it's copying the for. Let's go to the need layer, hold the Alt key or the Option key, copy the need and paste it here. And I'm going to change that to speed, not DPR. What am I doing? All right, there you go. Looks interesting. So we can keep it something like that. Looks very interesting. And let's make a group out of it and change the color of speed to red. Double click on the T, single click here, and let's choose something like this. Hit OK. And let's make a group of all of them. Select all of them. Let's make a group. And now adjust it the way you like it and you're good to go. Let's fit it to screen. Adjust it the way you like it according to the car. And there you have it. If you want to add some special effects to it, I want to hide the guide. How to hide the guide? Press Control semicolon. All right. Now, suppose you want to add some effects to it. First of all, let's just rotate it a bit more like that. Okay. Let's add some effects. It's not looking interesting. Simple. How to add effects? Convert this into a smart object first. Right click, convert to smart object. Now, make a copy of this control or command J and you don't have to watch any of this. The tutorial is over for bold for italic. If you want to change it to bold for bold and italic for italic. All right. Back to the image. If you're interested, go to filter blur motion blur. And the reason why we converted it into a smart object so that we can change the values of motion blur later and we can change even the text later. Right. So let's apply some motion blur. And let's choose the right angle. You can just play with the values to see which angles work for you. 
So it looks pretty good to me. I can just play with the angles even more to see which angles work better. But I think for me, I'm going to go with, let's say five. Let's see how five does. Five fits in pretty awesome. Hit OK. Looks amazing. But then we need to move it to the right a little bit. So we'll choose the move tool. The move tool is already selected and we can move this to the right a little bit, adjust the position, and there we go. Amazing effect, amazing need for speed. Now you can make a group of both of these. So this is the motion blur one, this is the normal one. Make a group of both of these, and you can rotate it if you want to. Just like so, it's pretty good. Now, also what you can do, in the motion blur one, you can also decrease the opacity of this just like so similarly in this case we converted it into italic if you want to make any font bold which it doesn't have bold you can select the text tool okay make sure that text layer is selected whatever the text layer you're in and you would select for bold if you want to turn it to bold if the font doesn't have bold if it doesn't have italic for italic do not forget to check it off later because otherwise it will add that to every font whenever you type so that's all for this tutorial, or is it? Wait a second. If you want to change the font and still keep the effect, you can do that. Why? Because this is a smart object. So all you have to do, double click on the thumbnail. It opens up another document with the text. Now, for example, you want to change the need, double click on it and change it to feed for speed. And you want to adjust it a little bit. Okay, and save it. Control or Command S or File Save. Not save as File Save. Come back to this one. See, even the motion blur is being changed with that because both are linked to the same document as a smart object. So finally, that is pretty much it. And by the way, guys, the results of the giveaway that we had last week is up. You'll be able to see the results on the community tab. So if you're one of the winners, I will personally contact you in the email that you provided and give you the plugin that you so deserve. Thank you so much for taking part in the contest. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. And I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much again. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.